Okay, now we'll talk about linear approximation. And here's the idea. If we have a curve in the plane, some function of x, and you have some x value, and you have a tangent line, a line tangent to the curve at that x value, something like that. Let me try that again. Get a line tangent to the curve. The tangent line is a very good approximation to the curve itself if you're close to this x value. You can see as we get farther away from this x value, the, the curve and the tangent line deviate. And as we get farther away from this x value, the curve and the tangent line deviate. But close to this x value, the curve and the tangent line are very close together. So the tangent line can be used as an approximation to the curve if you're near this value of x. So suppose we're over here at some other value of x, right here. And we want to find the value of the curve, the value of the function right here. We're looking for this y value right here for this x value right there. Okay, the idea is that we can use the y value on the tangent line as a good approximation to the y value that we're looking for. It will be off just a little bit, in this case a little bit higher, but it will be a pretty good approximation if, if this x value right here isn't too far away from our original x value. And you might ask, why would we want to do that? Why won't we just calculate the value of the function at that given x value there? And the answer is, sometimes it's hard to calculate the value of that function, or sometimes we may, we may not know the actual function. We may just know this point and something about the derivative at that point. So here's an example. Here's a problem. Find the appropriate value of the square root of 26, or excuse me, find the approximate value of the square root of 26 without using the calculator. We can't find the exact value because it's an irrational number. The decimal places will go on forever. But we can find the approximate value, and we know it'll be a little bit bigger than 5 because the square root of 25 is 5. But is it going to be 5.2 or 5.1 or 5.01? Well, I'm not really sure. And I could do some trial and error and try to figure it out, but that's not much fun and is rather tedious. Um, I could actually try to compute the square root. There's an algorithm for computing square roots, but most of us probably don't remember that. It's not commonly taught in schools because it's pretty lengthy and cumbersome and tedious and error prone just because there's so many steps. It's a something like doing long division, but a little more complicated. And, um, and most people don't even know how to do that anymore because calculators are so common. This is commonly done on a calculator. But if we're going to do this without using a calculator, here's what we can do. Let's imagine a picture of our square root curve, which looks something like this. And we know the square root of 25. We know that at 25, this curve has a y value of 5. So I'm going to think of my function as the square root function. f of x is equal to the square root of x. Or I could write it as x to the 1 half. And I know that f of 25 is equal to 5. So that's a point on this curve. And now let's take the derivative of this function. f primed of x, using the power rule, is going to be 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. Or that's the same thing as 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And let's find f primed of 25. We're going to find the slope at this point. So f primed of 25, we just put in 25 right there. It's 1 over 2 times the square root of 25, which is 1 over 2 times 5, or 1 tenth. So this curve has a slope of 1 tenth at that point. So let's think about that point, a slope of 1 tenth. That's rise over run. I'll actually I'll write out my reasoning here for you. The slope is 1 tenth. So from this point, from the point 25, 5, this point right here, if we go to the right 1, how far up do we, do we go? If we go right 1, then we go up 1 tenth. So if we go to the, to the right 1, that puts us at 26. And if we go up 1 tenth, that puts us at 5.1. So f of 26 is approximately equal to 5.1. And my function was the square root function. So the square root of 26 
is approximately equal to 5.1. And I found that by following the slope of the, the tangent line at that point, which I calculated to be a slope of 1 tenth. Now that tangent line isn't exactly along the curve at that point, but it's really close. You can actually see visually that the square root curve isn't curving all that sharply right here. So moving just one unit to the right shouldn't cause the actual curve to deviate too far from the tangent line. So I got 5.1. Let's check this on the calculator. We'll type in the, the square root of 26. and 5.099, so we're pretty close. Okay, so here's the general case. We have some function, f of x, some curve in the plane, and here's some value, we'll call it x0. And we know the slope at that point, and we know that slope is rise over run. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say from that, from that I know that rise, how far up you go, is equal to the slope times the run. And the slope of the curve is going to be the derivative at that point. The slope is going to be f primed of x0. And then the run is how far to the right we go. So if we come over here to some point which we call it x, this horizontal part is the run, x minus x0. And that leads us to this. If we calculate along the tangent line, and we're going to find this point, this y value, and use it as an approximation to the value of the function. So that we're using the, the point along the tangent line as an approximation to the y value at point x that we're looking for. We can say this, f of x, what we're looking for right here, is approximately equal to f of x0, the height right here, plus how far we rise when we go this horizontal distance. And the rise is the slope times the run. So that's going to be f primed of x0 times x minus x0. And this is the way you commonly see the equation written. f of x is approximately equal to, oh, this should be um, a plus right here, plus. F, prime, f of x is approximately equal to f of x0, the y value at this point, that's that, plus the slope, how steep this graph is, times the horizontal distance between the point where the slope is that we know and the point where the y value is that we're looking for. f of x is f of x0 plus f primed of x0 times x minus x0. And in the next video, we'll work through one more example of this nature.